So this is everything that I'm bringing to TAC. Alright, well, first I gotta get everything there. So I have this SKB uh, double bow case. I think the number on it is 4217. Uh, it is their double bow case. That's what I'm going to be putting all of this gear in. Well, most of it at least. And then I'm going to be carrying on my Stone Glacier 5900 pack on the plane. I'm not going to have much in here, so I'm going to be able to tie it, pull it down real tight. So that way I can use it and throw it in the overhead or throw it between my legs. I don't think TSA should have a problem with that. I've seen some other people on forums say that they've carried it on the plane before with a lot of stuff out of it. So that's my goal. So I'm just going to start. Uh, I'm bringing a lot of arrows. Like a lot of arrows. I'm bringing two dozen arrows. I'm shooting two days at TAC, two courses each day. It's like six arrows a course if I lose all of them, which I don't plan on doing. But uh, like I said in some previous videos, I'm not going to fly all the way out to Park City to not have the arrows that I want. I'm not going to buy some there if I don't have to. So two dozen should be plenty good enough. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need nearly this many, and hopefully all of them just stay in the boat case. But these are going to my boat case, probably staying at the hotel unless I need them. Also going in the bow case is like bow emergency stuff. Um, this is like my little emergency bow case kit. A pair of pliers, a pair of extra set of strings. I have levels, uh, serving string, D-loop material, razor blades, extra knocks, extra field points, a scale if I need to adjust my knocks like I've had in previous videos. So if I have to put one of these longer pre-made knocks in, I can adjust it down to the exact weight that I need it. Uh, a little pocket knife, bow string, wax. I think that's it. Then I guess we can move on to the next is in my, my bino harness. In my bino harness, um, especially when I'm at home shooting, I carry an Allen pack with me if anything were to come loose. I want to carry this with me at all time whether it's in my pack or in my harness so that way if anything does come loose when I'm out on the trail or out on the mountain, uh, I can tighten it back up at least the best I can. So I leave this in here and then one of the Allens for the site, I can't use it out of there so I carry the actual Allen in this small kangaroo pouch in the front. This is a uh, marsupial gear. This is the model that came out last year that has the sides on it to keep dust from getting in. This is a small. Uh, it's a small because of the binos that I'm running inside. They are the Vortex Diamondback 10x42s. Uh, these are a pretty entry pair of binos. Uh, I've, you know, hunting out here in whitetail country, I've just never needed really good optics. So these will get me by for now. Uh, it's something I definitely want to invest in in the future, but right now, these 10x42s are fine. The glass isn't the greatest in them. Vortex does make a higher end option probably go towards that. I really like Vortex. So the, uh, the range finder I'm going to be shooting this year, which is new to me, is a Leupold Full Draw 4. This has the angle compensation in it and I've already done the angle compensation with my arrow speed, my arrow weight, uh, and some other measurements off of the bow that you need. But it'll give you a an actual calculated corrected angle for you to cut on the angle that you're shooting and it'll give you a peak travel of the arrow in the arc of that arrow as it flies. This is another marsupial gear uh, pouch that goes attaches to it. it. Just You can order it off their website. I'm not sure what size this is. I'm pretty sure it is a small. It doesn't say but. Uh, also in this front kangaroo pouch, chapstick. You always have to have chapstick. And this is where I keep my primary uh, this, called? this is where I keep my primary release this is a Carter wise choice uh, it was blue originally and it had three fingers on it I cut the third finger off of it 
torso at the time when I got it cut and I sanded it down. I just had a friend of mine Cerakote this in a tan. Also, in my Bino harness, I carry a spare release, which this is the Ultra View the Hinge. I've been shooting this a lot lately. I'm gonna carry this with me because it's light and it fits perfectly right in this pouch. But this is my Bino harness setup, and that pretty much concludes the tools and accessories that I'm gonna need if anything were to happen on my bow. But we can go into gear now. My pack is a Stone Glacier 5900. I don't have the top on it, but I'm going to put the top inside my bow case. In the top, predominantly what I have is I have an extra three liter water bladder that I use for dirty water, a first aid kit. I have just like an all purpose accessories kit. Uh, this has got a lot of Luco tape in it that I don't usually carry with me on a hunting trip, but going through my case, I figured I'd just bring it out here because I'm gonna be trying some new socks. This has enough D-loop cord material, some serving material, a pocket knife, uh, range tapes, an extra spool for my sight if I need it, and toiletries kit, wet wipe, toilet paper, and two uh, Diamondback headlamps. These are really good headlamps. They're pretty cheap, they work well. But all this is going to be going in the bow case, in this top pouch. Alright, uh, water, I'll carry this Nalgene with me, along with that 3 liter. I'm going to have that 3 liter full before I go up to the top of the hill. Also with the water, one of the things I'm going to be carrying this weekend is going to be this scratch. Uh, these are pre-packaged electrolyte containers. Uh, I can mix two of these up in one of these 32 ounce Nalgene's and it's not overpowering. Uh, it does have a lot of flavor to it but it's not out of control. But uh, going from zero elevation here in North Carolina up until the elevation at Park City, uh, the best way to fight altitude sickness is to be hydrated. So I've been drinking a lot of these for the last week now. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of water and making sure that I am hydrated so when I do go up there. Hopefully I can combat that a little bit. On the nutrition front, for snacks, I don't have all the snacks I'm gonna be bringing here, but this is just a sample, I guess. Protein bars and these uh, Fuel for Fire protein smoothies, uh, closed. So, like I said, I'm going to be trying new socks out. This is what, I, I wore the Farm Defeat Ely socks last year during the late season hunt I had in Wyoming. I ran those with a merino liner that I got from REI and this was awesome. My feet never got cold in this and I kind of run colder feet, but these were awesome. These, and I'm going to this farm to feet. Uh, this is, I don't remember which one this is, Damascus maybe? It's a really thin sock. Uh, because these crispy boots that I have are the insulated version of the Crispy Nevadas, I decided to get a really lightweight sock and see how this does. So between these two or this combo or the combo of socks, I'm not really sure how my feet are going to hold up, but I'm, I'm not really too worried about it. I think they'll be just fine. So the Crispy Nevadas, I wore, I bought these used, so they were already kind of broken in. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good tip. If you're looking to save money on all this, because a lot of this stuff is really expensive, and it gets expensive, especially when you're trying to buy all of it at once, is look at the forums, look at Rock Slide, Archery Talk, eBay, uh, Facebook Marketplace, the groups on Facebook. Like, There's a lot of really good people out there that are selling a lot of really good, really good hunting equipment. Uh, I know I take extreme care with all of my stuff, and I would have no problem selling it or buying it from other people. I haven't really had any bad transactions yet. Everyone I've dealt with has been very good. So I bought these boots, they were used, but they were not abused at it by any means. So for clothes, Saks underwear, you can't go wrong with this. I think this is the nine inch inseam. I wore those all the time, they're the best. Marsupial gear belt, um, I really like this belt because it's low profile. This little clip buckle on here keeps it really tight so when you're wearing your pack, that pack pack belt doesn't it doesn't get in the way 
and it doesn't really feel like it's really crammed underneath that belt when you cinch it down. This belt also has a little bit of give and stretch to it. So you can put it on a little tighter than you need to and then when you cinch your backpack down, it feels like it loosens it up. Pants, this is another area where I'm testing some stuff out this year. Uh, these are the Sitka Traverse Pants. This is like the cheapest pant that they offer, I think in Subalpine. It's right around maybe a hundred bucks. Uh, I have these Sitka Ascent Pants that I've had for a few years now. I've worn these turkey hunting a lot and they're awesome. They breathe really well. They're super lightweight, they're super stretchy. They're a great pant. I'm gonna have these with me for sure. But I wanna try these Ascent, or these uh, Traverse Pants out. They're a little bit thicker, kind of like they're they're like the dumbed down version of the mountain pan. They are thick enough where they have a little bit of thickness and heat retention to them. Uh, but there's really no frills on these. There's like, there's the hand pockets, side pockets, pocket knife clip, but, and uh, a back pocket. But other than that, there's no knee pads. There's no nothing for these, but I don't really use a knee pad. So I'm gonna try these pants out. Pretty excited to see how they do. If not, be able to look out on a form near you. For the top, I have this uh, Sika lightweight hoodie. Probably not gonna wear this that much. I do have, I'm probably gonna just wear these like cotton t-shirts. Um, and if those get really rank, I'm gonna have these Nike dry fit shirts. Uh, we get these for work and they are, they're super comfortable. They wick sweat really well and they don't chafe when they do get wet so and they don't smell so depending on how i go through these t-shirts i'll probably be changing t-shirts every time i shoot because i'm sure i'm going to sweat through the first one in the first course and then change for lunch and then sweat the next one out in the second course so i'll have a few of these if i get, get too sweaty and too stinky and i'm unruly i'll probably switch to these dry fit shirts i have the sitka mountain jacket i've had this probably for three or four years four years now yeah four years uh probably just wear this in the morning on the chairlift up or uh maybe before the sun comes down before the sun really cracks up and brings the heat and then i have a puffy i don't know why i'm bringing this i don't think i'm gonna need it at all but it's just gonna be something a little extra in the bottom of my pack if my wife needs it i'll have it uh, i know she runs cold so I'll have this puffy if I need it, but I don't plan on really taking this out of the pack. Looking at the weather for this trip on Friday, it looks like we might get some afternoon showers. This is the Sitka pullover. Uh, it is like a poncho style pullover with like a half zip in the front. Lightest, smallest piece of rain gear I got just to keep me moderately dry. Maybe I'm gonna get made fun of for this, but an arrow puller. I've watched enough YouTube videos, people shooting tack, where people are struggling pulling arrows out of these new targets. Uh, so I'm gonna bring this. It doesn't really weigh too much. Maybe I'm gonna be a hero. Maybe I'll just be a nerd, but I'm gonna have it. So if you're shooting with me, I have an arrow puller. And last but not least, what everybody's waiting on is the bow. This is my Hoyt RX4 Ultra. This is what I'm going to be bringing to tack, obviously. This is the only bow that I have. So let's go through this, pull the arrows off first. These are the Sirius Apollo arrows. I've had a few videos on building these now and why I switched to these. They weigh in at 523 grains, shooting right about uh, 270 feet per second, uh, give or take. The chrono that they're going through, these things have flown and these things have been absolutely awesome to build, to shoot. Uh, I've unfortunately broken a few of them because they are so accurate. Uh, and the tolerances are really good. Uh, again, I have no relation with Sirius archery at all. Uh, they just make a really good product. I did a lot of research and then this is the arrow that I settled on for the setup that I wanted. This is the tight spot, five arrow quiver. This thing's awesome. It's fully adjustable. You can go up or down, you can mount them. Fletchings up, fletchings down. You can cant it. Uh, you can do a lot with this. Uh, this is a really good quiver. It's lightweight. They have a great warranty. So this is a good quality product. That's why it's on my bow. This is a Hoyt RX4 Ultra. I've had this now. This will be my second year. Uh, I just put gas bow strings on it. The Ghost Ghost Strings. And they... Ghost? 
The Ghost XV. Yeah. Ghost XV camo strings. And they've been awesome. Uh, I had no peep twist once I put them on. Once I got my peep centered up where I wanted it to, it hasn't moved at all. Um, these strings have been awesome. I have the Hamsky Trinity Pro Aero Rest. This thing is just bomb proof. That's why I have it. It's awesome. This is an older site, but it is the HHA Kingpin. Uh, this is the dovetail version or the tournament edition. This site has been absolutely awesome for me. Uh, Chris, who owns HHA, uh, I've known him for a few years now. Just did a podcast with him. He's got a great, uh, he's got a great outlook on life, and he's doing a lot for some veterans. It's a great podcast. You should check it out. Uh, I believe it's HHA USA. But Chris is a great dude. Uh, I'm gonna run his stuff. They have a new version of this. It's the Tetra. Um, this site's been awesome. It's been easy to site in. It's been easy to adjust, and it holds. I can undo it from the dovetail, shut it back in, and it's still zero. This is a uh, Spider 12-inch bar with the. Uh, this is a Hamsky adjustable angle. Uh, right now, I have it set at five degrees, and I have four and a half ounces of weight out front. Uh, this holds really good for me. Another great product. And that's it, guys. Uh, headed out to TAC. This video is dropping a little later than I wanted to. Probably wanted to do it last week. Probably would have been better. But things came up. Things got behind. But head out to TAC tomorrow. Stay tuned. Hopefully, I have a video in the near future of actually going and shooting TAC. I will let you know what my arrow count is when I come back. Go ahead and drop a comment down below with how many arrows I'm going to lose. The first course I'm shooting on Friday is going to be the knock-on course, which is not going to be an easy course. So leave a comment down below how many arrows I lose. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeff Cordero. Thanks for watching.